Hello everyone and welcome to game number 5 between Lalush and Goody in the Zota Cup number 30 finals. And um, there's something I have to confess. Um, I'm sorry to those... Um, I have to make an apology to those people who watched this video before when it was posted on my YouTube channel. I didn't have sound. I have no idea how that happened. It had the exact same encoding settings as all the other videos. So I'm pretty sure there was some, uh, some YouTube... Um, some YouTube issue there when the upload occurred. I'm not exactly sure what happened when it was processed, but um, here I am. I'm gonna redo this cast for you guys so you can actually hear something. Um, and uh, so far, the score is tied indeed 2-2 for uh, uh, for this game, for this series. And um, I mean, I'm really surprised to see the goody, uh, goody pulled back those two games and uh, managed to. Um, Pull through and come back in the series and tie the score. And now uh, we have game number five on Shakur's Plateau. Now Shakur's Plateau is still one of the um, one of the newer maps. We have these expansions that are like there is no gold, so that's something to uh, to keep in mind. There is no gold expansion, and we have these interesting expansions over here. And now I'm gonna say why that is, but in this case, it's not gonna matter so much because there is uh, their cross positions. So the spawns are in cross and it's not going to make a, a difference, but for instance if you spawn uh, I mean since they spawn like this uh, then these expanses over here are really safe to take because uh, you can uh, You can you have them protected first of all because you have these rocks over here in this in the lush case You can just take this exp take the rocks down and take the expo and that's it And you have these rocks over here, and there's no other access route than through your base um, if you don't take the, down the rocks over here, and it's also kind of hard to scout this one. And it's the same for the Terran player. Actually, what the Terran player can do, he can get a fast expand up, load five ACVs and a command center, and fly it down here and not even destroy the rocks. So that's something you should uh, keep in mind when you're playing Terran. Especially when you have cross positions, cross spawn locations, and you don't have to worry about someone, you know, taking down their rocks and then chipping away at the expansion you have over here. But yeah, that's not going to happen in this case. So we have Lush going for a... Uh, gas after spawning pool. This spawning pool, pretty standard timing here. Nothing too fancy about that. Wants to take this over here, and here we have the SCV um, building another engineering bay. So, like I said in the in the previous game, or was it previous game? Yeah, I think it was on Scrap Station when this engineering bay was put down. It's because it builds so fast, and it's one of the highest HP structures in the game. So you wanna you wanna build this if you wanna prevent the fast expansion from the Zerg. Now. Um, since the spawn locations are as they are right now, then uh, the Zerg wants to get this expansion up so he can uh, start expanding his creep out towards the center of the map. I expect to see a lot of creep spreading over here, but also this expansion is quite nice to take if you do end up spreading your creep because it's going to be protected as your army is probably going to be stationed here in this area somewhere. and. Um, uh, also, this expansion is quite safe. I would say that this one is safer than this one over here, simply because it's not so um, it's not so exposed. This is way out in the open. You don't have to you don't have to climb anything. I mean, go up or down any ramps. While you have to go up this ramp here, for instance, to get this base. So there is some sort of choke over there. So naturally, that should be easier to defend, as always. Now we have uh, we have a lot trying to scout what Goody is doing over here, and let's see. Here we go. We have a command center almost done which means that he might actually end up doing what I said and just lift off and put it down there um, and we have a uh, roach warren it's almost complete right here so I see Lalush going for pretty much the same kind of unit composition he has uh, throughout the duration of these series of this series just getting this uh, pretty fast roach warren every game now the roaches are much more popular than they used to be Obviously, because of the increase to that range, which makes them a lot more uh, usable. Basically, that's what happens. So, yeah, people getting roaches these days because they're sturdy little bastards. They have a lot of life, and they pack a punch, and they have uh, the armor. And um, yeah, why not get them? But we see Goody didn't want to land over there. Um, that overlord would scout it anyway, and he and he lands the command center down here at his natural. We have a Zergling from Malashir holding the uh, the Zilnaga Tower close to Goody's base. And then and, and, and let's see what's going to happen this game. We already see creep getting uh, spread across this area. Another queen coming out. And Lair is almost done for uh, for Lush. And we have two factories with tech labs. And this can only mean two things. 
uh, siege tanks or Thors or both. So um, yep, there's an armory going down. So obviously this is gonna mean some Thors. Definitely gonna be some Thors in the game. And um, let's see what the Zerg player decides to do. I mean, this is a pretty big map. It's a macro style map. So I would like to see the lush taking advantage of that and expanding uh, quite soon. I mean, after after this base, he should uh, consider expanding to another another base. It's always tricky with Zerg. I mean, the the trickiest thing that I think it is with Zerg is the fact that you have to also always. Um, I mean, you always have to care about this injection of larva. It's really what your. Uh, it's really gonna come down to your larva production. And if you have only, for instance, at the start right now, he's droning really hard. I mean, you can you can see this aspires on the way, by the way. And here we have a siege mode on the way and vehicle weapons level one as well. But um, it, let me uh, go back to what I was saying. Um, looking at the income tab, you can see Lalash here, still droning pretty hard, 43 harvesters right now. And he's still, uh, I mean, he just saturated this base right now. I'm sure he, I think he could use a few more, like two, three more drones in his main. But anyway, the the idea is you can't really make so many units if you do decide to drone this hard. Now, once the Spire completes, which is where it is, oh, oops, oh, I just did a big, big misclick over there, but it's okay, because I'm just going to scroll back. And, um, yep, there we go. So this Spire is... Um, over here to avoid those scans obviously I mean for those of you who don't know I, I keep saying this all the time you want to plant your spire in a place where your opponent obviously especially if you have spawn locations like this was spread apart it's very hard to scout this location unless you pull a scan off here and the scan is either going to go down at the natural or at the choke of the natural or on the main and uh, he's just going to see for instance the spawning pool and the roach one right now so there we go uh, spire is almost done and uh he has like 500, almost 600 gas saved up, so we'll see some Utilisk spawning right now. And nice expanding, nice creep spread right here. He's expanding the creep all the way towards the middle of the map, and um, this is very good to do. I mean, you want to do this because it really makes your game a hell of a lot easier as Zerg, especially on such a big map like this. You want to have domination, at least at least on your side of the map. You want to have the creep so that when the Terran pushes across, he's going to find himself um, in the position to have to deal with your units that are moving extremely fast on the creep. Now, we have seven mutas on the way. Uh, six already hatched, one more on the way. And let's see if they're going to go harass the mineral line over here on Goody's side. We also have Burrow and the Baneling's Nest on the way. Where is the Baneling Nest? I'm, well, here it is. Also, pretty much out of sight. But uh, let's see if he... Yep, he made one Thor. And there's another one on the way. And some turrets going down. Where's the turret? Uh -huh, one here and seems like we're at the natural. I guess this was the turret. And there's another one going... I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, here, here come the Mutalisk. And they're trying to actually do some damage over here, but this store is going to ward them away. Although they get a few SCV kills, I think like, yep, three there, plus whatever they got before that. Um, then another one over there and here, so just uh, killing a bunch of SCVs there. I'm not exactly sure how many harvesters he did lose, but uh, I think it was around six or so. So, um... These Thor is going to ward away the Mutas, but they did their job. I mean, they took out a few workers. That's always good, especially on the Terran camp, since you have to just keep on making those SCVs from the Orbital Command, and you can't just, like, make 10 at a time like Zerg can. You can just make 10 drones. And still we have uh, the Lush expanding over here, making a lot of drones. I mean, 12 drones on the way. This is going to be... Um, that these drones are going to be used to saturate the expansion over here. I like the fact that he is macroing up like this. Now we also have... Pre-igniter and vehicle weapons level two already. Now this is going to be pretty nasty because already a lot of tanks being stationed.